Hey guys, welcome back to the Radiola 60 restoration project. Right now we're working on the cabinet refinishing. When we last left off, we had finished stripping the main cabinet. Uh, and I want to focus on the top because I think it'd be easier to illustrate all the steps just on this, which is just a separate flat board. So this hasn't been stripped yet. What I did is um, some of the veneer was loose. I glued it and clamped it. That's all I've done so far. So next up we're going to strip this. I'm just going to use some acetone and some paper towels. And then I'll try to keep the camera and the board at the same angle in the same position as we go through the subsequent steps. So let's get started with stripping it. I'm just on top of my workbench here. There's nothing in the area that uh, is of any concern. If I get a little stripper, or not stripper, if I get a little solvent splashed on it. So just by doing that, it's getting a lot of the oils and waxes and dirt that have built up, but I haven't really dissolved the finish yet. That's going to take... It needs to sit longer, or uh, using some steel wool can help. problem with steel wool, though, I found. And you should be wearing gloves when you do this, if you don't have any gloves, gloves handy. If you have some uh, plastic grocery bags, just stick your hand in there. And then, you know, use your steel wool or whatever. This stuff won't dissolve with the uh, acetone or lacquer thinner. Problem with this is you want to use coarse so it kind of gets in there and doesn't get clogged up with the old finish. But if I pour this on here, it just kind of soaks right through and it's going to go all over the place. That's why I'm not crazy about using this. Uh, a sponge with an abrasive uh, pad on it uh, might work pretty well. But I'll just I'll just be patient and I'll just keep going at it like this. Uh, I know from doing the rest of the cabinet that once you kind of break through the top layer, it goes pretty quick. I just Put it on pretty heavy here and let it sit for a bit. Also evaporates very quickly. It's so one advantage of lacquer thinner versus acetone. This is pure acetone. I ran out of lacquer thinner. Lacquer thinner was mostly acetone, but it has some other stuff in it. And it doesn't evaporate quite so quickly, this acetone. Practically as soon as you put it on, it uh, evaporates. But uh, just like that, we're pretty much down to bare wood. Just that quickly. That's why I don't bother with any strippers or anything when it's got an old original finish. The stuff just falls off and melts off so easily. You don't need to go with anything more aggressive. So just like that, we've got about half of the top done. Now this outer surround is more like a paint. That's a little bit, uh, takes a little bit more work to get that off. Also, this finish is not all that thick. Sub cabinets have a pretty thick clear coat. This does not. So just like that, and we're pretty much down to bare wood. And very pretty wood, I might add. Nice book matched. Uh, consensus seems to be that this is mahogany, and by book matched, I mean it's two pieces of veneers. So I took a log, and they sliced thin strips out of it, and then they just took two of them and kind of folded it open like a book and put the seam right down the middle. Really nice figuring in that when it catches the light. Just to give you an idea of what it's like to use steel wool, here's a little demo. I'm just going to pour some of this right onto the wood. And steel wool. Works better like this. Like I said, if I tried to pour this on this, this is so porous because this is really coarse grain. Or coarse uh, steel wool. This is grade 3 I'm using. You want to use uh, coarse stuff so it doesn't really get clogged up with the old finish. But it certainly goes much, much faster. But the trick is you need to get this off before the solid evaporates or you just turns right back and then just re-solidifies right on this surface of the wood. There we go. Just about done. I'm going to do a little bit more around this. And then of course tackle this edge. For that, um, I may employ a toothbrush. I've got one here, an old cruddy one, soaking in some lacquer thinner. And you can just work that in there. Just like that, in about five minutes, we can get this 
whole thing stripped down. All right, top is completely stripped on both sides. Next up, sanding sealer. Why are we sealing it? Because we're going to be putting on grain filler that has a dye, a color to it. I don't want that to soak into all the wood and darken it. This is, uh, let's see, we got Varathane sanding sealer. We've also got Minwax. They're basically the same stuff. They're both water-based. They look milky white. Dries clear. I'm going to mix it up a bit. I picked up a bunch of foam brushes at the dollar store, so that is what I'm going to apply it with. It's a little humid today. They say it dries in an hour. I think it's going to take a little longer. Now it looks absolutely horrific when you put it on, right? Trust me, it'll look... It'll, it'll dry clear and... Uh, I'll do a little light sanding. I don't want to sand, but... Um, this is going to leave brush marks no matter how careful I am. It's kind of a thick, weird, gooey kind of substance. I think it's actually some kind of polymer, like vine, water-based vinyl or something like that. I could be completely wrong, but I remember reading that somewhere. There is no spray version of this that I know of. Now there is spray sanding sealer that's uh, like lacquer based. Uh, I can't get it locally and I'm out. Plus, all that all the aerosol stuff, it's been getting increasingly expensive. And one can of sanding sealer and it has to be shipped ground because they won't put it on an airplane. It would cut, I'd have to wait a couple weeks maybe. It would maybe be maybe $10 a can or something crazy like that. Whereas this stuff I can get local, and it's, uh, I can, I, I, I forget, it's maybe eight bucks, ten bucks, and this will do a whole lot. So you don't need, you don't need very much, man, that, that's enough right there for the top. But see what I mean about, yeah, <laughs> it'll dry clear, but it's, there's going to be ridges in it. Could you put this into a spray bottle and apply it? Maybe I suspect it's going to clog up. It somewhat self-levels, but that's the trade-off. If you want it to dry quick, it doesn't necessarily uh, level out that well. And you don't want to dilute it, because then it's not doing its job as effectively. And yeah, we want to get it on all the surfaces, so we'll get into the molding too. And then we will let that dry and uh, resume. Another lovely day where we have 82% humidity currently, so I had to let this sit a good uh, two plus hours to completely dry. Look at that. Looks great. No milkiness, it kind of gave it a semi-gloss finish, and it actually uh, leveled out better than uh, I thought initially it would. So you really don't see brush marks. So I could probably move right on to grain filler, but I am going to give it a light sanding. Probably just to show you how I sand, and the key component to that is this, which are surprisingly hard to find. Uh, we have some fine woodworking shops in my area, and uh, boy, I don't think any of them had this. I had a, a hunt around, and I think I finally got it. Well, you can see I got it from Guitar Tools. Uh, maybe you can find them on Amazon. It's a cork block. Uh, four inches by two inches, and a uh, over an inch thick, I'd say. And notice the beveled edges. On one side. Now you might think you want to sand like this and the bevels to give your hand a little comfort. Perhaps, but I find it can be uh, helpful to actually sand with the bevel side down. So how do you use one of these? Well, get yourself some sandpaper. I like uh, this 3M stuff with no slip grip. It's got a little bit of a gumminess to the back and uh, stuff holds up well. 
Traditionally, 220 is what you go with, but I, I kind of like 320 a little better. Really no reason to go coarser than that, not when you're working with a good hardwood veneer. Uh, so cut it so it's a little bit larger than the block. Put it on there, fold it over a little bit, and then the sand. I like the beveled edge because it um, kind of gives the sawdust sort of a, a place to go rather than the sanding residue. This stuff is really easy to sand. I mean, it's designed to uh, sand off quite readily. It makes this sort of white dust. We uh, don't want to sand all the stuff off that we just put on. Just light to get any uh, little high spots, brush marks, fuzziness out of it. You just want to be careful with the edges. One, uh, it's easy to put too much pressure and angle this down and just grind into the edge. You don't want to do that. So kind of sort of almost kind of lift at the, the edges. It's also especially uh, hard to get a really nice smooth crisp edge I found um, on the grain end because it's very irregular on the end here. But uh, patience. So often what I'll do too is be it sanding filler or uh, sanding sealer or grain filler or the final coats is I I kind of build it up a little bit thicker on the ends and around the edges to give myself more to work with to level it out and smooth in all the defects. And there are defects. That's one thing you'll notice when you sand is the defects. Why do they get highlighted? Because the, the sanding residue goes into the voids. And these are dings. These are dings in the wood from many, many years of this radio being on the planet. So, so be it. I'm not going to fill these in or anything. I, I, I don't want, like as I was saying earlier, I don't want this to look like it was just made yesterday. I want it to show a little bit of age. So we're just going to leave all the dings there. Here's a closer look at the veneer. This may look pretty good, but it's actually really, really quite rough. All those dark flecks and specks and marks you see, those are recessed into the wood a bit. That's the grain of the pores that we want to fill in next. And as you'll see, the grain filler is dark. And uh, I've seen people comment that, oh, that's, that looks too dark. I'd rather get neutral color uh, grain filler or something the same color as the wood. Like, no, because these marks are already, these specks are already dark and if we use a dark filler it actually makes the, the beautiful grain the figuring pop even more so just like when we put this stuff on it looked horrible at first be the same thing with the grain filler so let's get to it I'll uh, sand this a little bit more clean it up and get the grain filler going this stuff is also very very thick and heavy so I'm going to use a screwdriver rather than trying to use wooden paint stir because I think it would just break off. What I often do when it's like this is I get a red solo plastic cup and uh, get a chunk of the stuff out of the bottom and mix it in with some solvent separately because it's gonna take forever to mix up that whole can and I don't need all that much. So As far as what is this, it's a really fine, basically sand, I think, like silica, with some color, and a binding agent, and a bunch of solvent. Best analogy I can give you is it's like tile grout. At least that's how we're going to be using it. It'd be more manageable to mix up in this cup. I mean... Really, that's even just that amount is more than enough for what we're going to be doing. I'm not going to grain fill the underside. I'm not a masochist. I'm just going to do the top side. I say that because this takes some time. It takes a bit of finesse. 
And we still have 80 plus percent humidity, so everything's going to take forever. Alright, so I'm going to transfer a bit more. I'm going to get a spoon and transfer some of the solvent, mix it up good, and then we'll start slopping it on, and I'll show you how that goes next. So it may seem like a lot of talk and not a lot of action, but that's, that's, that's the point. Preparation and uh, being careful on each step will save you time in the long run. Now there is another technique where you could slap this stuff on extra thick, let it dry, then put sanding sealer over it. In other words, build up a really thick layer and then sand the heck out of it and get it all back down to where it's completely level. Uh, this doesn't really warrant that, but it is another option if you don't want to fuss with this, as you're about to see I'm going to be doing. So, I want to scrub this going across the grain. I want to work this into everywhere. You'll see is when it dries, it'll lose the sheen, and it'll become uh, uh, very dull looking. That's when we'll start scraping off the excess. Don't worry about slopping it onto the sides, we can wipe that off or sand it off later. When the stuff is completely set up, it does bind pretty tightly. So anything you get on the edge, like here, no, it's a good idea to wipe it off while it's damp, rather than having to scrape or sand it off after it sets up. How long will it take to set up? I'm not sure. For uh, most of my woodworking projects, I used uh, grain filler by Bellin, Balin, B E. H-L-E-N, I think. But more recently I got this Mohawk, but I've only used it once or twice, and it's been... It's been a while. I haven't done a lot of refinishing since we moved to the new house. About uh, five, six years ago now. Alright, that should be good enough. Yeah, that's a good consistency. So you get this goo, and if uh, you lift too much up in one area, you can always smear it back on and move on. Yeah, that's looking pretty good. You may be thinking, oh, that made it much too dark. It won't. It hasn't. You'll see. For one, we will be doing a bit of light sanding and then we'll remove a bit more of that. Something else you can do is take a rag. I would wait till it was a little bit more set up than this. Take a rag, put a little bit of mineral spirits paint thinner on it and wipe it over the surface. Problem with that is you run the risk of dissolving some of it and lifting it up where you don't want it to come out. I'm pretty sure I've never gotten it perfect on the first pass. <laughs> so I don't expect this to be any different. But that's pretty good. That's... I don't really want to put my nail into it because I don't want to lift any out but compared to earlier when I ran my nails across it and showed how rough it was this is much 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 smoother it's not perfect but it's considerably smoother and it will be perfect or nearly perfect by the time we're done I'm really lucky I wanted to do a second pass. I'm not as experienced with this product again, so I don't know how much shrinkage there's going to be. There's the last of the solvents 
uh, wear up. Now this stuff I'm scraping off, we, we're saving this. We can reuse this, we can reconstitute it. Just put it back in the container with the rest. The yeah, Android is a bit of a challenge. You don't want to swipe this way. But when you lift up and dive back in, you leave these chuck marks. When I came back, if it's a smaller piece, uh, I guess if I ever do a long reach with this, I go all the way from one end to the other and run. smooth action. I gotta say, I'm liking this stuff. This this is working better than I thought it would. Mohawk makes really good stuff. And so does Bellin, and uh, there's a few other makers I believe out there that make this stuff. Timbermate, I believe, is another one. I've heard there is a water-based one. There's something called Crystal Lac. I'd never tried using it. I remember there being a lot of interest when it first came out. Oh geez, that's probably ten years ago now. Supposedly, the claim was it was a lot easier to use or get better results or I think it was crystal clear too for the people that didn't like this darkening the wood. Another option is you can get this stuff in neutral and it absorbs stain. Uh, I've never used something like that but if you're doing a lot of projects and you have different wood types and whatnot and you want to alter the color rather than having to buy half a dozen different jars of this stuff in different colors. You can buy the neutral and add your own. You know, take off a little bit, put it into a cup, add some dye to it, and mix it up as needed. Let's see what the jar says about dry time. Reduce filler as needed with grain filler solvent so that Mohawk actually does sell a specific grain filler solvent. Apply a wet coat by cloth or brush. We did that. Allow filler to begin to flash dry. We did that. Now they say to rub it into the open pores with burlap. Uh, across the glaze, circular pattern. Uh, I scrubbed it in plenty well good enough with the brush. All excess filler should be cleaned off before drying hard. Well, <laughs> they don't give you any details about, about how to do that. Uh, allow to air dry overnight before sealing. Rags containing filler are susceptible to spontaneous combustion. Interesting. So... I if this has linseed oil on it. Oh, contents. Magnesium silicate hydrate crystalline silica. So that basically is a really fine sand of sorts. Calcium sulfate, iron oxide red, magnesium carbonate, linseed oil. Yes, it does have linseed oil. Oh, petroleum distillates, butyl cell O solve and butyl stearate, carbon black, ethanol, toluene. Ethyl benzene and naphthalene. It's got all the good stuff in there. So maybe forget about what I said about using mineral spirits or paint thinner to dilute this. Uh, it sounds like they put a lot of thought into this and have a very specific formulation. Maybe that's why they give you this plastic ring to really help keep it sealed in there. And this does seem to work really well. So I'm inclined, uh, if I need this on more projects and it dries out, that I will buy their solvent. Interesting, linseed oil. I would not, I would not have guessed that. Huh. I'll try to give you a close-up. I suspect it's a little hard to tell what the heck is going on. All those little flux now are filled in. It's not perfect level out of the surface though, so I think I'll need to do a second application. I was concerned about letting it sit too long before scraping it off. 
perhaps if I let it sit a little longer. Well, better better to do a second pass and leave it on too long because then you have to sand it off, which is really difficult to do because this stuff, being basically sand and being having this gummy binding agent, really clogs up sandpaper fast. You will go through a lot of it if you need to sand off the excess. While the grain filler on the top sets up, I've switched to working on the main cabinet. I've done the sanding sealer around all the sides. I already uh, sanded and put grain filler on the back. Now I'm working on the front. Front is the money shot, so to speak, so that's where I want to focus my uh, main efforts. And for this, even if there are some waviness, uh, I am inclined to sand out the defects because I want this front to be as nice looking as I can. And luckily it's already pretty darn nice as it is. I'm not really finding any significant high spots or low spots, so I think I'll be fine to just uh, stick with the sanding block. Oh, by the way, when you sand, before you put the grain filler in, see all those white spots? That's what we're going to fill in with the grain filler. Sorry about the fan noise, but I really do need to have some ventilation while I'm doing this. So just like on the top. Working in the grain filler challenge with the uh, main cabinet, of course, is that all these panels are recessed, so we have to do our best to uh, work around the edges. And I've been using uh, some plastic uh, painter tools to dig out excess, so like that. Get the junk out of all the Looks and crannies where I don't want it to go. Time to scrape off excess. It's annoying here where we've got that trim on the edge. And what I've been doing is going right up as best I can. And I don't want it on this. Not that it'll harm anything, but the, the grain on this is really tight. It's not veneer, it's solid wood. Probably poplar. And the last bits we get with this. I finished going over the entire cabinet with the grain filler. We're going to let this sit for a few days. Humidity is still 80 plus percent. Yes, we have a dehumidifier. It's running right now, but it's hard to uh, fight it when it's over 80 percent day after day after day. Uh, so we want to make sure this is good and set up. Interesting read that uh, now that I know that it has linseed oil in it. And uh, a few years ago, a reader, a viewer rather, had commented that that was a traditional way to do grain filler back in the day was to take a fine grit, maybe even plaster of Paris or fine uh, pumice and mix it with linseed oil and then add some colorant to it and smear it in. Linseed oil reacts with the oxygen in the air, I believe, and oxidizes and hardens. That's why you don't want to leave rags soaked in linseed oil. Um, they can, as they oxidizes, it generates some heat and they can spontaneously 
combust. But that's not going to happen with this cabinet. So <laughs> we'll pick up in a few days when this has set up, hopefully. And meanwhile, back to the predictors.